hope you're all well and welcome back. Or if you're new, thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Matt from Distant Sun Studios, and today is the sixth part in the video series called Inside the Mix. We'll be covering EQ and parallel compression, the principles of masking, and finally, how to create clarity and definition inside the mix. Let's get straight back to it. Here's the static mix of the drums from where we left off in episode five. Now that we've got a nice balance for the drums, I will add a broad stroke EQ and a compressor to the main drum bus. This will help to create cohesion between the individual elements of the drums and also start to shape the tone. So let's have a quick look at some of the settings. I've chosen to use the Pultec EQP 1A with a gentle boost and slight attenuation in the low end at 30 Hz. I've then added a very gentle 1 dB boost at 10K using a broad bandwidth. And then finally some attenuation at 20K to help control the top end of the cymbals to make sure that they don't become too harsh. If I now click the plus sign in the top left hand corner of the plugin, you'll see I now have the option to select the next insert in the plugin chain. In this case it's the Fairchild 670 compressor. The settings that I would like to emphasise here are, I've deliberately driven the input gain quite hard, as this will give me more saturation and character from the Fairchild circuit. I don't want to overly compress the drums here, so I've set the threshold for the compressor to peak at about minus 3 dB. In the Fairchild compressor, the attack and release times are fixed by these six different time constants. I've chosen to use time constant number two, as the attack and release times lend themselves really well to a parallel drum bus. I've introduced the sidechain filters here, which means the compressor's detection circuit isn't going to react too much to the lower frequencies in the kick drum. And then finally I've set the mix control to about 40%. This is where I think the compressor sits really well. Let's have a quick listen to both plugins. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please take a quick second to hit that like button. It really helps out me and the channel more than you think. A really nice byproduct working from the top down like this is hopefully it'll prevent you from getting absorbed in creating really highly complex plug-in chains to all the individual instruments in an attempt to build the drum sound from the ground up. I know I've certainly been there. Instead, the lunar extensions and the drum bus EQ and compression have already got the overall drum sound well on its way. Next, we're going to look at high and low pass filters. As you could hear, the overall drum sound is very good. However, if I solo the three individual kick drum microphones that are routed through the kick drum bus, you will hear that there isn't a great deal of clarity in tone. In fact, the microphones combined sound slightly muddy or muffled. This is why one of the biggest challenges we can face when mixing is to try to make sure that different instruments or sounds in the same frequency range aren't competing too much with each other. I'll now solo the three kick drum microphones in turn. You'll be able to hear that whilst capturing the same instrument, Due to the variety of microphones used and their relative placement, the sound captured by each is slightly different.
I could just try to balance the three microphones as they are. However, a build-up of the shared frequencies in the low end could inevitably lead to quite a muddy sound as we heard earlier. Where frequencies compete like this, it's often referred to as masking. You are not able to hear clearly each of the instruments in a mix, or in this case, a well-defined kick drum. I'll now go back to the three individual microphone tracks, and I'll engage the high and low pass filters that are built into the API console extension. I've chosen to use the condenser microphone for the low or sub frequencies, the second dynamic microphone for the low mid range, and then finally the first dynamic microphone to add some attack from the beta hitting the skin of the drum. As I now play back the track, listen carefully to how the filters affect the tone of the kick as I bring them in and out. Remember, what we would like to end up with here is a cohesive sound where the three microphones are no longer fighting against each other. Now the three microphones are working together, I've added the API Vision channel strip and the Poltec EQP1A to the drum bus, allowing me to really shape the sound as needed. The API channel strip is doing a great job gluing together the three mics and also getting the overall sound of the kick where I would like it. I've deliberately chosen to add the Pultec EQ as well, as it has its own vintage character. It will also allow me to easily adjust the weight and shape of the kick drum around the key frequencies of the mix take shape. As I play back now, I'll exaggerate just how much low end could potentially be added when boosting at 60 Hz. What is a nice balanced drum sound in isolation like this will rarely be the same balance used once all the instruments are in place. And I'm sure you've guessed it, but when you add the rest of the instrumentation to the mix, each of the instruments will fight to be heard in their own frequency range. And there lies the challenge. If you've enjoyed today's video, you may want to watch this next, where I recorded the drums in session with Johnny Mars drummer, Jack Mitchell. As ever, thanks so much for watching. I'm Matt from Distance Sun Studios, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.